In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what it means to be more than a witch. This is a VR to Abby the Witch. So the first question is, what's your name? Any stories or meanings connected to your name? My name is Emily. I have a few middle names as well. I also have a married name, which is Diamond, and I have a maiden name, which I have kept as part of my name. My names mean something to me. My maiden name is powerful, I feel. <laughs> My main name has power because I feel like it's very associated with me and who I am. So I consider that to be kind of protected in a way. But I believe the name Emily means something like shrewd. I might be wrong, but I remember that from my childhood, like reading up about it. How old am I? <laughs> I am in my 30s, I'm 36. So I think mostly people think I'm younger, which is nice. I always have been told I look so young and people then talk down to me, which isn't so fun, but you know, it is what it is. So the next question is, do you use astrology, Western or Real Sky? What are your big three? Okay, so yes, I do use astrology. I have been studying astrology for quite a long time on my own, but yeah, I wasn't sure which way I wanted to go really. And then I decided to start a course last year, which is teaching Hellenistic astrology. And I am not finished it yet because I took a bit of a break, a pause in the summer, and I still have not picked it up. So I'm quite behind. I've thoroughly enjoyed that and I feel like like this is where I want to go. So it's based on whole sign astrology, traditional astrology. I am aware of real sky astrology, Vedic astrology. I have read a little bit about it. When I discovered what signs I was in Vedic astrology, it didn't make as much sense to me as in Hellenistic astrology, to be honest with you. As a tropical Western astrology, it makes much more sense to me to work with whole sign Hellenistic astrology at this moment. In the future, when I feel like I am an astrologer, which is what I'm aiming to to be, it's what I would like to become, as well as a tarot reader and a witch. When I am able to offer astrology readings and when I can call myself an astrologer and be confident in that maybe down the line I'd like to learn more about Vedic astrology. At the moment though, my focus is whole sign Hellenistic astrology. I do find it interesting and empowering, but yeah, again, it's not something that, you know, I've really gotten hooked on. I think that the Western astrology is really where I've been most interested and that I felt the most aligned. My big three, I am a Leo sun, I'm a Cancer moon and a Scorpio rising. I love my signs and I very much relate to them in various different ways. The more and more I learn about astrology, the more and more my chart makes sense. Did you grow up in a religious household? What religion did that influence your current spiritual path? Yes, I grew up in a religious household, but no, it wasn't particularly strict. So I grew up in a Church of England, church and my parents took us to church. My sister, I believe, decided when she was about 10 or 11 that she didn't believe in it. They were fine with that. My maternal grandparents, I don't believe, had a faith, but my paternal grandmother did have very strong faith and she was one of the most incredible women I've ever known. And so I do feel like that influenced me heavily. When I was about 17, I started going to a Baptist church because I'd moved to a new area with my family and I was on a gap year. So I wanted to get to know people, I started going to a Baptist church and really found myself thrown in the deep end because it was very, very different to being in a Church of England church when I was younger. Because with the Church of England, I would go and sort of feel like, a bit detached from it so it was quite easy for me to just sort of pick up witchcraft when I was 10 11 and roll with it without feeling strange at all however with the Baptist influence I started to feel oh gosh like I can't talk about this oh if people find out this is what I do and this is who I am this is going to be a problem and I didn't really know that before so that was yeah interesting to navigate I went to a summer camp as well worked in summer camp when I was about 20 and yeah that, that was a difficult experience I'm not gonna lie a lot of trauma from that experience uh, a lot of stuff that yeah was definitely traumatic Christian trauma yeah left over residually and I've talked a little bit about that in some of my videos I might do a video on it specifically I think the video I talk mostly about it is uh, I think it was a VR to Bronia K and it was about like my tarot path or my tarot story because I talked about how I came to tarot which was around when I was 17. So, I mean, it definitely did influence my current spiritual path because I still, I built quite a strong connection to Jesus, but it felt much more spiritual, it felt much more loving than like the teachings that I was actually being taught. So I kind of took it somewhere else. It felt different in my body and in my 
spirit and when I was connecting it felt different and I also found a lot of comfort in nature and I started to learn about pantheism and felt that I could experience deity through earth, through nature. That very much aligned with me. Then through pantheism I learned more about animism and found that that resonated even more. My paternal grandmother has passed. I also had a very, very strong connection to an auntie who had a very strong faith and I do feel connected to them now that they are in spirit. I was left a couple of my grandmother's books one small book of prayers that includes the Psalms. I work with that quite a lot in my practice. I read it for comfort, bibliomancy, and I also search for the Psalms and I work the Psalms with candle workings or I recite the Psalms. I also have a few books on Psalm magic and it's something that I do do. I haven't talked about it yet really all that much on YouTube, but it is something I've been doing for the last couple of years. It's something that works very well for me and resonates very strongly with me because the words are powerful and I feel that connection with Jesus. I feel that connection with my bloodline, but I'm not experiencing it in a Christian religious kind of dogmatic way I don't consider the words to mean the same as what a Christian would and I wouldn't consider myself to be a Christian either I'm not a Christian witch some people might say that I am but no I'm not I'm an animist witch but I enjoy working with psalms and definitely as well like folk magic this is becoming more and more popular to to study and look into but yeah folk magic a lot of it especially in the British Isles it centers around a lot of Christian influence and a lot of Christian literature as well, prayers and psalms. And so that again has a lot of value for me because it's it's literally my lineage and it's, it's where I've come from. So yeah, that means a lot to me. I think I have some Catholicism somewhere as well because I do have some Irish ancestry but it's not something that I have really deeply connected to. But yeah, that's probably something I could look into in the future. What are you manifesting for your future? Quite a lot of things because I'm quite an ambitious type of person and most of it is centered around my spiritual practice and path as well as like my career. And I absolutely love what I do. I work with the Witch's Box and obviously I create content here and I love it. But I would like to get to a place where I have a bit more time so I can offer tarot readings because I've been meaning to do that for so long. I and mean, if you've watched my videos, you'll know that I even talked about it. Like I keep meaning to do it. Uh, setting up Patreon was something that I was really proud of doing, it's something that I needed to do so that I would like to create more content on Patreon as well that I don't necessarily, I feel like I can't put here. I'm so glad I did that but yeah, it's just time, I just don't have the time in order to do everything and I don't have all the spoons either, I'll just say that. But definitely as well to become an astrologer, I'm also going to finish my Reiki, doing my Reiki 2 this season so by the time you see this I probably would have done it because I often film a few weeks in advance. I would like to become a Reiki master although I don't particularly like that label because of how it sounds but obviously that's what it's called. So I'll do that, I'll become an astrologer, be able to offer readings and potentially spell work for people as well. I'm not sure whether I will or not. I probably will offer consultations however. That's something that I feel like I'm happy to do and I'd like to do some courses in the future as well that's something I'd like to do so we'll see how much time I have <laughs> do you have a favorite season what time of year makes you feel the most authentically you okay so for the last few years I have been witnessing that I have a tough time during my birthday and I believe this may have something to do with it being Leo season and not exactly aligning with Leo season. I'm not your typical Leo at all, but I am in some ways as well. I have been a performer. I was a singer and a dancer and an actress. I went to a performing arts school. I almost went to drama school. I got into a few, but decided to go to university instead. I did a degree in theatre studies, but did a dissertation in the end, so I took it to quite an academic place. And yeah, then decided not to go into that because actually what I wanted to do was write. I wrote in magazines about things that I loved, fashion, beauty, and lifestyle and things like that. I really got distracted there. My favorite season, I think, is this time of year. Although, again, I am definitely experiencing some mental health struggles this year and definitely I will say as well my word of the year was boundaries and oh my gosh it was almost like a prediction that I gave that as my word of the year because so many things this year it's just like mm, need that word this is the word that makes the most sense and it's literally like grounding me it's like an anchor it's like boom right in the center of my belly that is the word that is just like Argh. <laughs> It's been a hell of a year. So yeah, we'll just move on from that. But I do think my favorite season is 
autumn, the season of the witch and Yule. Those are my favourite times of the year, for sure. Absolutely. I definitely feel like my most authentic self in this season because I just feel, yeah, at home, like I can be me and like I am just fully embodied, do you know what I mean? Love it. Do you have a favourite colour? Do you feel that this is your aura colour? If not, what do you think an aura colour is? So I do think my aura colour changes. I have seen it in various different iterations. I think the last time I looked it felt green, like a sort of jade green. That's not necessarily my favourite colour. I think I've got several favourite colours. I've always loved pink and I've always loved purple and like pink and purple together. No one pushed pink on me, but I like pink. I also like blue a lot and I like green a lot. So yeah, I do, I guess I do like green. When I was little, I liked purple and green together quite a lot. And that's interesting because I think they're quite witchy colors as well. Like, and I like an earthy green. I find that really relaxing. Like I really like moss colored green. I find that so relaxing. And then like more of an aquamarine kind of green as well. So I'd probably say pink, purple, blue and green are like my favorite colors. Obviously black to wear. My hair is like a shade of like purple kind of at the moment, but I mean, it looks quite dark on the screen to me, but in real life, it's kind of like more like violety purple, but I want to go darker. I said to my mum, I want to go like black, black, but I keep getting my roots through because I'm actually kind of mousy brown naturally. And a lot of people actually thought I was a redhead because I kept putting red dye on my hair for a really, really long time. And my mum actually has like red auburn, like a dark mahogany kind of red color hair. So I think I do have like the complexion for a redhead as well, which I think it works quite well. I actually have neutral skin color. And I think that I can wear both cool and warm tones, but I think I look better in warm tones. I think there's just something slightly, like maybe it's just like slightly, I'm slightly better with warm as I like wearing gold. So I think that the black doesn't quite suit me. So I think it needs to be a kind of chocolatey black or kind of like amber black almost. So I probably won't go like cool black, but warm black, if that makes sense. And yeah, I said that to my mum and she said, oh, but you look so nice with lighter hair. And I said, but I want black hair. <laughs> Like I do think that actually having lighter brown hair suits me like when I look at pictures of myself when my hair had like blonde highlights I think it actually suited me quite well, but I don't want the honey blonde hair anymore or the honey brown hair It's not the blonde kind of I want black I think it might be just where I am right now and like fully being expressing my witch self you know I spent a lot of time in the closet not as such like from you know close people but you know to society and so I think I really really like reveling in like being fully embodied so I've got a lot more like witchy clothes that I like to wear now and just darker black clothes purple clothes like really just sort of more more kind of gothic clothes I quite like and I'm very drawn to so that's what I want at the moment so I think my aura is like green. There was a point like I think earlier in the year where I felt like it was a rainbow. I could feel and see rainbows. I'm trying to actually look in the viewfinder now like against this white, like what can I see? But it is dark outside so I think probably what I'm seeing is not exactly accurate. I see like a bluey green. That's what I see. Need to spend a bit more time on that. In terms of auras, I have actually always seen auras but I tapped into them quite early. I read about them when I was maybe 12 and started to look and actually practice seeing them and that then strengthened it so I can actually see them on people. It's not helpful if they're moving around and obviously like if they're on a white background it's a lot easier. So I do do that. Uh, I just, it's not a practice I do all that much but it's something I can do. I do have clairvoyance in that I see things in my mind's eye. I also have seen a couple of things in front of me but mostly in my mind's eye have seen in a clairvoyant way so yeah I do I do see things in that way so yeah I can do that do you have a job career lifestyle that makes money or helps support you and you and your family in any way what do you do yes I do when I first left university I worked at schools as a teaching support assistant because I worked a lot with kids when I was younger like I had work experience with kids and so yeah like I enjoyed working with kids and I knew I wanted my own kids and I enjoyed it a lot and so I did that for a few years but I did about nine different internships which took quite a long time in different magazines in London that took a lot of time and a lot of money and effort and I could not have done that if it wasn't for my then boyfriend who is now my husband as well as my parents who supported me while I was being paid nothing so I recognized that it was a very privileged place for me to be. I had earned money up until that point. I worked for a children's centre and I, as I said, worked for schools as a special support assistant. So I had some money, but yeah, I 
definitely couldn't have done those internships but it's a privileged career like you can't work in magazines unless you can do the internships because you have to work for free basically or you get your expenses that doesn't even cover your train costs so very very privileged to be able to have done that did it take me very far not really although I enjoyed it it was great and it's lovely to have on my CV it got me a job in fashion e-commerce in London which I worked at for quite a while which gave me a lot of experience like online digitally creating digital content working on websites which then got me another job in e-commerce when I moved finally back to Buckinghamshire when I was no longer commuting from Buckinghamshire to London, then worked in e-commerce closer to home. Then I got pregnant. My husband and I decided to move down here. And when I was down here, I was pregnant. I got a job at the National Trust, which I loved. I was doing map signage, which felt a lot more like aligned <laughs> for obvious reasons, like being close to nature and such. And I used my editorial skills and such. And then I worked for some magazines for a regional publishing company. One of their offices based down here in Devon and they have offices all over the country and I worked with them for a few years. I really enjoyed that job a lot. Wrote again about passion, beauty. I remember one day actually I got an email from a local witch and I really, really, really wanted to run with it and I I was like, oh, just need to check this. So I sent it to my editor and he was like, oh, this is just so weird. And I was like, mm. it was a bit of a disappointing moment that stayed with me and I remember thinking that maybe I need to find something that's a bit more aligned but I loved it I did love it but I have kind of a dream job now I work with the witch's box I work as a social media editor so I love that but it does mean that I don't switch off a lot because I work from home and I literally do what I am and love I literally eat sleep and breathe witchcraft and magic and spirituality and tarot and divination and the occult and it's dream come true but it's also just it's a lot sometimes like I'll have consumed so much information and I've written a lot in one day and have like put a lot out there on social media through my own channels as well as with the witch's box and now I'll get to the end of the day and I'll want to do a ritual but I'll just be like it's too much like I need to just sit in front of the TV and like consume something that's not about witchcraft for once. But having said that, I'm always saying to my hubby, let's watch this because it's about witchcraft and he doesn't want to. So I think it's probably healthy that I'm with someone who's not a witch. <laughs> so yeah, that's a little bit more personal, I guess, if you're interested. And my husband works as well and we have two children. And so yeah, our life is quite busy. I do the school run as well. So yeah, busy and I couldn't love my job anymore then I do, I love it. What are some things that make you unique and an individual? So this is really interesting because I'm doing this VR after having seen Abby's video that she put out about this question because she was noticing that I think some people responding were like, oh, what's individual about me? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think one thing that's quite unique about me is that my sun is in Leo, which is ruled by the sun, and my moon is in Cancer, which is ruled by the moon. So I think that's quite interesting and unique. I also feel quite unique as a Scorpio, and I know that there are only 12 zodiac signs, but I just feel quite unique because of that. And having two water signs makes me feel unique. Being on YouTube makes me feel quite unique, even though there's so many people on YouTube that I don't know anyone in my real life other than the people I've connected with via YouTube who are on YouTube, so I think that's quite unique. I think my interests are quite unique. I think that my style is quite unique and eclectic because I like a lot of things and I sort of smush them together. Hope that they'll look good. I like to have white space like this, like neutrals. I like a lot of neutrals, like greys and like beiges, but I have a lot of colourful accents and things around, like knickknacks and such. I think it's quite unique that I talk to my ancestors and I love that, I wanna teach my children. I think it's quite unique that I put my menstrual blood on my face and <laughs> some people are quite grossed out by that, but yeah, I do it. And stem cells and like rejuvenation and like, I'm telling you, it's like the best for the post. I am hoping to do a video on blood magic and Saturnarium did one recently and it was brilliant and I was like, yes, this is the video I've been wanting to make for years and I've just not had the, the guts to do it. And since Saturnarium did, I was like, yes, you know, I'm gonna do this. I think it's quite unique. I collect so much tarot. I think the amount of books I have is quite unique and a bit, yeah, over the top. I think there is a lot about me that's unique, but I don't mean that in like a, 
aren't I amazing way, but I just think I've always had quite a strong awareness about myself and my differences. Not that I would compare myself, I mean obviously when I was younger I definitely did compare myself, but like what I mean is know thyself is like a really important tenant for me anyway. You know, obviously it's a really important tenant as a witch, but I've always been self-improving. I think it's quite unique that I am someone who is able to say I've really f***ed up and owning that and I'm sorry and I'm gonna do better because I do that a lot and I've always done that. I remember being at school and doing that, like I broke a ruler, my teacher found it and like the whole class was in trouble until the person came forward. Obviously I came forward but like a lot of people wouldn't have. I remember you know, little things like that would always happen to me but I was always very honest, I'm very honest, very open very, very, like, heart on the table, do you know what I mean? And I think that's quite unique as well. I've had to learn boundaries because I'm definitely an empath as well. Like, I've soaked up way too much of someone else's sorrow, and I still do. Like, I have to work at boundaries so hard. Like, so, so hard. They need to stay up as well. Like, they need to be so strong. Otherwise, they just come down because I am the person that will bring them down without realising it, I just do it. So that's something that's been so important for me to master in my practice and I've been working on it since I was a teenager and I'm still working at it, I'm telling you, this is why boundaries is my word of the year. I think a lot of the things about me are quite unique and I don't mean that in like a aren't I a great way because I think some of the things that make me unique are quite self-destructive but I am continually striving for improvement and to be a better person for my kids, for the world, I want to help people and the world and I know there are lots of people out there who want that but like I just mean I'm trying all the time to make it better, to make myself better. I think that's important as a witch. What advice would you give to your younger self? I think there is nuance in everything and you are allowed to change your mind and that two things that are opposing can be true simultaneously and that you are so much stronger than you think you are and you have like a deep well of self-love that you don't even know is there. So don't think that you don't have self-esteem. I know it feels hard. I know this feels like absolute shit, but you're gonna get through this and you're stronger than this. Actually, you're gonna reach a point where you thank the bullies because they're gonna make you stronger. They're gonna make you work harder, even though what they did was awful. And also you forgive them, not for them, but for yourself, me, yourself, Emily. That's what I'd say to my younger self. And also just stop being so hard on yourself and you know you're beautiful and you don't need to change yourself for someone else. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, favourite interests, hobbies or activities outside of witchcraft? Oh my god, my entire life is witchcraft now it feels, so um, okay, yeah. Fashion, beauty, always. I do have a probably unhealthy fixation on the Kardashians. No, I mean, I'm not obsessed. I have just started watching the new programme because we got Disney Plus. It kind of hooks you in. I haven't always enjoyed it. I actually started watching it when I was pregnant with my first child, which was seven years ago. So I haven't even been watching it from the start. I remember people at work would talk about it when I was in my 20s. I didn't really watch it, so I didn't really know. But yeah, I think that that's probably a guilty pleasure, but not obsessively. I'm interested in film. I did like a section about film in my degree. Really interested in it, like the femme fatale, love. Basic instinct, love, so I love film. My husband also did media at university, so he's quite interested in film. We like watching films together. I love reading, I love all kinds of reading, but for the last few years I've read basically just witchcraft and spirituality books. So I would like to get back to reading some fiction, because I love it. I love art. I paint and draw and my mum was an art teacher so that's something I've always loved. I love to collect art. I don't have a lot of it up yet. In fact it's all over there. We've lived here for like about a year and we still haven't put any up so this is like something we've got to do. Obviously tarot but a lot of that comes from the art thing. Home decor as well. Like I love interiors, interior design. Beauty and makeup definitely. Fashion definitely because I worked in fashion magazines. I worked at Harper's Bazaar for years so I know quite a lot about designers. Sex. I'm not even gonna beat around the bush. I'm definitely quite a sexual person, something I'm interested in. I've definitely involved that in my magic. Oh, cooking! I am such a kitchen witch, like you might have gathered that from like all of the, 
the recipes <laughs> I've featured on the channel. Like I love cooking. I have been cooking since I was a kid with my parents and my grandma always cooked and like my entire family have always cooked. Like my uncles and aunts and my dad has always been an amazing cook. My sister's an amazing cook. Even my husband, he didn't really love cooking when I first met him because I worked in London for so long and he would be home before me, he would have to make dinner and he's actually really good at it. Like especially when he's like, practiced at something like he's like the king of roast dinners I'm telling you roast potato by my husband is like the best you've ever had I love baking baking is a big big thing for me and cooking all kinds of things I was obsessed with Nigella growing up always I still am gardening I enjoy again my family have all gardened I'm not very good at it though like I I just find it hard to remember like what to do with what plants so I always have to look it up but being a green witch and herbalism being something again I'm studying I've been studying for a while on my own and something that I am interested in actually learning herbalism like I forgot to mention that earlier but yeah becoming a herbalist would be great as well I want to become a lot of these things so that I can offer a kind of holistic service in terms of like a magical practitioner offering. Obviously I went to like a drama school so dancing, singing, acting. I used to be quite good at singing and acting. Uh, dance was like my least strong area. I like working out as well. I like doing hits and I like doing resistance training with weights and I like yoga a lot. I started doing this beauty yoga after my babies were born which I love. I love Pilates. I used to run quite a lot but I don't do that anymore because it's hard on my knees. I have lots of workout DVDs though like from like Gillian Michaels to Tracy Anderson. I really enjoy dance cardio. It's probably like one of the things I enjoy the most but if I do it too much then I get really bored of it and I think the thing I get least bored with is probably like weights and hit and the stuff I love is like yoga. Oh my god, I love restorative yoga. Yoga Nidra, oh my god, I recently started doing yoga nidra, which I love because meditation is obviously really, really important for me. I think often in the West we think about yoga as like an exercise and we don't actually bring spirituality into it and it's not something I really have worked on but it's something that I have had as a goal for a while but I feel like yoga nidra is a really, really beautiful way to like bring that meditative spirituality into a yoga and actually yoga nidra is like sleeping so it's meditation but there's a whole program to it where you like focus on different parts of your body and it's something i'm really interested in learning actually how to do so i do practice yoga nidra actually what else dancing yeah love dancing love dancing in a club love dance cardio love singing used to be quite good at it not so much anymore because because i talk for hours on these videos and then i lose my voice and my throat hurts I love food. Yeah, I love my friends. I love seeing friends. I love walks in nature. I like going to the cinema. I like good restaurants. Uh, I like museums. I love cultural things like sightseeing. Yeah, being with friends. Like when you meet someone who's like on the same level as you, like and, like you're like aligned and you're like, oh my God, you're like my soul sister. And then you like stay up all night long talking. Like that is like, oh, like I love that. <laughs> So yeah, like there's a lot of things that I love and I feel like witchcraft is in every single one of them. Oh, I didn't I didn't talk about aromatherapy. Since I was little, my mum was doing aromatherapy, so it's something I learned to do with her and I really, really love aromatherapy and definitely make that magical. Like everything is magic as well, like even like down to the decor. I did a video a few years ago about like, everyday magic or like the mundane tools that make your life magical or that you can practice magic with and it was such a long video, it was probably too long, like all my videos are way too long. But I remember just thinking, oh my gosh, there's so much more, there's so much more and it just kept going and going and going. Um, and I love decorating for Christmas, I cannot wait to decorate for Christmas. So that's like a lot. I think my favourite, favourite things to do are like reading, cup of tea, hot chocolate, that's really nourishing, watching films, going for a long, long walk, on the beach, having a dog, having a cat, animals, the kids, getting excited about seasonal stuff, all of those things, eating good food, baking good food, love it all. So yeah, I finally got to the end of this. This was so, so long. I wanted it to be short and sweet, but yeah, I kind of went off on one quite a few times. This was More Than A Witch by Abby the Witch, who I love here on YouTube. If you have not subscribed, go over and subscribe to Abby right now. Thank you so much for making this tag. It was fantastic and really, really lovely to talk to you. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you got to the end of the video, please leave me a little witch emoji with broom. 
that'd be good. And share it with anyone as well who you think would enjoy doing this tag and share Abby's channel. And if you're not yet subscribed, please do subscribe, click the notification bell. If you'd like to join my Patreon, I share new and full moon forecasts that include the planetary aspects, custom tarot spread, shadow work prompts, journal prompts, how to work with the aspects in your practice, rituals, etc. ideas that you can do, crystals and herbs to work with during the lunation, and yeah, the tarot spread, a PDF of that. That's all available on Patreon. I also share some Book of Shadows pages that I've created around recipes and spells that I've done on the channel. Occasionally I will share those, so that's where to go if you want to support me. I also have an Instagram page and a TikTok. TikTok is less active because I don't get on with it. I also have a buy me a coffee page as well as super thanks down below and a direct PayPal if you would prefer to support me with a one-time donation. That would be so appreciated but not necessary. Please do leave me a comment below if any of these questions speak to you or pique your interest or if you've got any questions about anything. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Look after yourselves, many, many blessings, and I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Mwah. Bye.